Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, right, we're okay with Barbed Wire Trees. This is Sam and I'm Jim. Ah, so when did you guys form the project? Well, we actually formed um, the kind of Barbed Wire Trees aspect kind of came together at the start of this year. But um, we, we were talking about projects similar to this at the end of last year, weren't we? We were kind of interested in this whole yeah, we've collaborative... We've been experiment experimenting with it for a while, taking some kind of some vid early video shots. We've got a few early videos that we're going to actually put on the bonus features of our DVD so you can have a look at. And, uh, yeah, it's all come together nicely now. Actually. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting actually. Oh, cool. So can you give us a bit of background behind the name? Um, we chose the name because of actually our own personal backgrounds. I mean, we've been living in Newport now for the last three years, but we're actually from the countryside. So we kind of wanted this urban meets rural aspect, and we kind of envisaged this idea of a barbed wire tree because you've got the kind of very urban barbed wire, which you can also mm. find in the countryside, and the, the kind of the tree, which you can also find in both. And it's quite symbolic. Yeah, isn't it? it's quite a bit of a juxtaposition going on there between barbed wire and trees. So. Okay, so uh, on to the music. Can you tell us more about the composition of the pieces? Well, in terms of the composition, we aim to keep it fairly minimal. We use just pianos to begin with, um, trying, to, trying to really draw the viewer into the actual images, kind of relate music to the images of the scene of film. Later on, during the uh, mixing process, we actually added some MIDI instruments as well. But we're still just trying to keep it minimal, mm. trying to get it to relate to what's actually going on the screen. Max Richter is one of our kind of um, inspirations in this kind of field because he composes a quite minimal piano and uh, we were kind of drawn to this holy, there's a group called the Holy Minimalists and we were kind of drawn to how they use their piano in such a way that kind of creates a sense of fullness and atmosphere while being very minimal. Okay, so you mentioned uh, producing there, uh, I mean did you do it all yourselves and was it a lengthy process? Yeah well we said from the start that we were going to try and split it really so I was in charge of everything with the and then Sam was in charge of everything to do with sound. So he organised the recording, he he was in charge of mixing, mastering, and then in terms of video. Mm. When we took the video clips together, but I edited, edited them together, chose which shots to use, which is kind of, and then we just come together and collaborate mm. to get the final we thought, we thought it was very important that we did the work ourselves. Mm. Um, we think that in such a project like this, it's important that you get involved as much as you can. And we just wanted to test ourselves really, to say yes, we can produce music, we can mix sound, and we can create our own videos. Even though we're not film students, we thought, you know, this is the only opportunity when we can all, all the people in our group actually, kind of say, actually, let's test what we can really do, and do it ourselves. Yeah. I mean, it's a really hands-on approach, yeah. you're just taking complete ownership. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it, and everything that we've done, we've, we did the filming ourselves, um, the sound ourselves, we all kind of grew up to grips a bit. We even created the photography books ourselves, you know, we, yeah. even though we used the publishers to actually assemble the book, all the editing and where the, where the text was placed, what font was used, what pictures were placed, where they were placed, the front cover, the blurb, the was actual photos all, themselves. The actual photos right. themselves as well were all edited by, by us, we, we didn't get outside help in terms of that either. Mm. So. And I, I'm, I'm guessing you don't want to give too much away here, but could you give us a little bit of clue in more detail where the film was filmed? Do you want to that one, Jim? Yeah. Well, um, we really wanted to choose very diff two, well, three locations that are really symbolic to us. So the first film is kind of in a location in Newport, not going to specify where. The second film is more about a location at home that has had a lot of history, had a lot of change over time. Where's kind that? Of, uh, it's a Clee Hill. It's actually where where we live in at the moment. Back at home. It's got quite an industrial past, and Newport has as well. And that's the first kind of similarity we found between the two. So we thought that in the second video we would create a kind of commentary about this kind of in industry related side. I mean, it was a lot of quarry working happened at Monkey yeah. Hill, so we got some stock footage of. Yeah, we don't, quarry don't, don't, don't say of too course, much. yeah, we don't say too much, but yeah, that, that's it. We were clear as to where we're coming from. And then the, the third video is, is more to do with um, just general lands, the landscapes of the two different places, but we don't want to give too much away because obviously it's all we do. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you want the audience to get from this project? We really, we really want them to understand how we see the two different places where we live, how we see the world, and how the world has changed in these two different locations, whether it be for political reasons, for industrial reasons, and then just kind of environmental yeah, reasons. Yeah, exactly, as well. environmental reasons, and just highlight the beauty that's present in both, in both environments, really. One well, of the great kind of things that happened was when we showed somebody quite senior um, on the course. 
one of our videos, the first thing they said was, I can see where you're coming from. I can see how you see nature in the urban area. I can really see the barbed wire trees is actually what we said, which we thought, you know, great, that's what we want people to experience. So you're neither pro rural or urban, it's just a kind of a love of both. We pro we pro both and we see downsides with both, but we also see beauty with both as well. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we think is very important. We spend a lot of time travelling between two different worlds. Every time we go, because I work back at home, every time we go on the train it's travelling from one to the other. It's just after three years you just kinda understand more about the differences in the smells between two different environments. Yeah. So, um, have you got any future plans for Barbara White Trees? Well, I have actually um, wanted to organise a meeting with the museum in Newport because I have an exhibition space in the town centre and I thought it would be quite nice to have it exhibited so that people can have a walk around and look at the posters, look at the photos, watch the films, see the music. Maybe that's something I could explore in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could also give them a copy of the photo book as well because it's quite, it's quite a nice thing to be you know, we, we're creating a DVD, but we thought we'd make this book because it kind of gives the audience a kind of insight of where we're coming from, and it's quite a nice thing to have as well. We think it's physical, nice to have something physical. Think. Yeah, physical is still important in our opinion. Even you know, in 2014, a lot of stuff is online, but people, especially now that people have started buying vinyls again, it kind of shows that actually people still crave that kind of sense of having something nice that they can hold and show off to other people. I suppose. Yeah. Oh, it sounds very interesting, guys. Well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. time. Thank you. So, and don't forget to come and check out our performance on May the 10th in A17. The, yeah, A17 in the city campus or showcase all our works. I'll definitely be there. Thank you.